now here we can see the morphological subdivisions of the cerebellum so first is the archi cerebellum which is the oldest part it contains this lingula nodule and the floccula so these are the parts of archi cerebellum it has a chief connection with vestibulo cerebellar part and the function of this part is maintenance of equilibrium of the body mainly the trunk so it is controlling the tone posture of the muscles of trunk then we have paleo cerebellum which is in pink colored that is it is between uh, neither oldest nor newest it contains whole of the anterior lobe except the lingula pyramid and uvula and it has the function of controlling the muscles of the limbs then we have the new cerebellum which is yellow in colored it is whole of the posterior lobe except the pyramid and the uvula and it is for the smooth performance of highly skilled voluntary movements of precision now the internal structure of the cerebellum the cerebellum is made up of thin surface layer of gray matter which is known as cerebellar cortex and a central core of white matter embedded within the central core of white matter these are the masses of gray matter which are termed as intracerebellar nuclei first we discuss the structure of the cerebellar cortex so in the cortex we have three layers that is the outermost molecular layer also known as plexiform layer then in the middle we have purkinje cell layer then innermost is the golgi cell layer so first the molecular layer the molecular layer is the superficial layer it consists of the numerous dendritic arborization of the purkinje cells here we can see these are the purkinje cell which is lying next to the molecular layer their dendrites they ramify in this molecular layer in spite of this we also have other two cells that is the basket cells these are the basket cells and the steatic cells the basket cells are small in size with little cytoplasm and extensive processes the longest of these processes that is the exon of each cell assume a transverse course here we can see the transverse course parallel to the cortical surface and right angle to the longitudinal axis of the folia these transverse exon synapse through numerous basket like nets of collateral with the dendrites of many purkinje cells so here we can see these are the basket cells then we have stellate cells stellate cells with characteristically short processes are scattered near the surface their exons arborize with the dendritic spines of the purkinje cells then we have purkinje cells these are the purkinje cells it is the intermediate layers and it consists of flask shaped cells the dendrites may arise from the neck of the flask and passes upwards and then it is dividing into many branches while the exons of the purkinje cells it goes directly into the central core of the cerebellum and synapses with the intracerebellar nuclei then we have granular layer so this is the granule cells the inner granular layer consists of numerous closely packed granule cells this layer also known contain the golgi cells over here each granule cell this give rise to four or five short dendrites which make claw like endings which synapse with the terminals of the mossy fibers so these are the mossy fibers which are synaptic with the granule cells then the exon of each granule cell passes to the molecular layer which bifurcates at the t junction over here we can see the formation of t and its branches run parallel to the long axis of the cerebellar folium these fibers are known as parallel fibers they run at right angle to the dendritic processes of the purkinje cell and make synaptic contacts with them then we have the golgi cells golgi cells are large and prominent but scanty their dendrites ramify in the molecular layer then we have intracerebellar nuclei the intracerebellar nuclei these are the forms of gray matter which are found in the white core of the cerebellum so first we have the dentate nucleus this is the most prominent 
of the intracerebellar nuclei and largest in primates, especially in humans. It is the nucleus of new cerebellum and therefore it receives afferent fibers from it. In sections, it has a shape like a crumbled bag with its hilum. This is the hilum. It is facing anteromedially. The interior of the nucleus is filled with white matter made of the efferent fibers that leave the nucleus through the hilum forming the superior cerebellar peduncle. Then we have medial to it the emboliform nucleus which is oval in shape. It is situated medial to this dentate nucleus. It is partially covering its hilum. It is the nucleus of paleocerebellum. Hence it receives afferent from it and gives fibers to the red nucleus via superior cerebellar peduncle. The red nucleus projects it to the spinal cord through rubrospinal tract which facilitates the flexor muscle tone. Then medial to it we have the globose nucleus. This is the globose nucleus which is rounded in shape and lies between the emboliform and fastigial nuclei. It is similar connection with the emboliform nucleus. The globose and the emboliform nuclei together sometimes referred as nucleus interpositus. Then most medially we have fastigial nucleus. It is lying very close to the midline. It is smaller than the dentate but larger than the nucleus interpositus. It is the nucleus of Archi cerebellum, hence receive afferent fibers from flocculonodular lobe and conveys efferent fibers to the vestibular and reticular nuclei. The vestigial connection influences the extensor muscle tone.